I'd like to introduce Dr. Ashok Khosla, Chairperson of uh, Development Alternatives, also Kanika Varma, Lead Entrepreneurship Program, Development Alternatives. Dr. Khosla, what about the government's role in all of this? Uh, what initiatives and schemes can the government bring in at a time like this when artisans perhaps need government support more than ever before? Well, government has uh, come alive to this and for some years they've been thinking about and doing uh, a lot to try and help clusters of, of the craftspeople all over the countryside. And the Ministry of uh, uh, Micro and Small Enterprises has been actually quite, uh, quite at the forefront of this. Uh, first, I, I just wanted to say I'm delighted to be here. And Pranay, you remember uh, 40 years ago when we were starting Development Alternatives, you were one of our early supporters and, and guides. We, we go back a long way. Um, several subsidiaries of, of DA, Development Alternatives, have been set up over those last 40 years. And uh, one of them is the India and Micro Enterprise Foundation. And we've been working with several ministries. The government has been quite supportive. Uh, and uh, we are iteratively developing with government uh, ideas about how to reach craftspeople on a much, much larger scale than before. Karika, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, let me ask you, uh, how does one build scale? Uh, what I mean to say is that how can handmade be scalable? Um, thank you so much. And again, I'm delighted to be here and delighted to be part of this initiative. Uh, I think the, the most important thing and the premise that we base anything that we're developing is to make sure that the artisans are empowered. And I guess this is what uh, this campaign is about. And we have a very um, simple three-step process for doing that. One is looking for innovative collaboration. And I think this is where our collaboration with Hubba um, is extremely important because uh, the support that we provide to the artisans combined with the market support can really take things um, to scale. I think the second step in the process is to make sure that we have their voices in the solution. At the end of the day, it's their aspirations and their needs. And technology can be extremely uh, disruptive, but it can also be a double-edged sword. So we always make sure that um, their voices are in the solution. We co-create the solution with the artisans. I still remember we had gone to a village um, and where a lot of the elderly um, weavers were like, but who are you creating the solution for? Because the young people don't want to be part of the solution. So we started spending a lot of time with uh, the youth and then we started figuring out how they could be part of improving value chains, maybe look at even sometimes of some kinds of designing um, initiatives. I think the other is to make sure that women are an important aspect of um, what we do. Uh, they are not at the lower end of the chain looking at the most subsistence kind of uh, support, but are at the forefront of the solution. I think Karika, the third is an... Yeah. No, Karika, I was just very just, curious to yeah. know about your Sfurti program. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, and, and I think that's where Sfurti comes in because um, I think Feroz was also talking about it, that we're looking at long-term sustainability. And the Sfurti program is to just make sure that we have the right infrastructure that the artisans require so they can move away from drudgery and also provide support by collectivizing them. So um, a common facility center, for example, can ensure that all their, met, all their needs are met together. There's zero wastage and also some of the solutions also are matched with environmental needs as well. And of course, connecting to the markets is an extremely important aspect. So the big point in Smurti is that we turn an artisan into an owner of his or her enterprise. Right, right. Ashok, uh it's just wonderful to see you. I must say something which I, uh, uh, to you which I even say when you're not in the room. I admire and have admired you for years because when 30 years ago you started development alternatives, it was amazing, the, the, the vision and the, and the, and the scale. <clears throat> now you've had all these years of experience. Give us two or three points that really would help this country push and help the livelihoods and push the, sec the artisan sector forward. We've not 
managed it well so far. We've done no. well with software, but, but we could do brilliantly with artisans as well. What, give us two or three things from your experience that we could learn from. Well, Pranoy, I think one thing uh, one has to recognize is that it's a mindset problem. Uh, one has to go back to the Mahatma, really, to see that it's insights, it's the commitment, it's the dedication to certain visions that a country has to make if it's going to get its problems solved. And basically, Gandhiji said, you know, you start at the bottom. You basically put the last first. And if you design your development patterns uh, to take care of them, uh, you have a totally different outcome. And the kind of outcome that you're talking about, both in terms of improving large numbers of lives, but also at large scale. Uh, so the first thing is that we forgot. I think over the last 75 years, we were so concentrated on providing for Sensex and stock markets and FDI and large-scale capital investments, that we really forgot that a very large part of this country, in fact, two-thirds, two maybe three-quarters of this country, depends on uh, household and creative industries, industries that really me mean a lot and, uh, and are huge potential for serving our own needs as well as for exports. So that's number one. Number two, uh, one has to also recognize that we've destroyed We've destroyed more than simply jobs and livelihoods. We've destroyed our environment, our forests, our rivers, our soils. We're now in very serious trouble. I mean, our next generation is going to pay very heavy costs uh, for the kind of uh, product, lack of productivity, this destruction of productivity of our resource base that we've landed them with. So now we've got to design our future and our jobs and our livelihoods in such a way that we also regenerate the environment. So the right. second thing you really need is to, to look after that. And the third thing is that if you get your priorities right and you help using high-tech, digital, and everything else, uh, ways to connect the producer to the consumer, then I think you've got a fighting chance. Bilkul Ashok ji, you've given Gandhi ji ki yaad dila di aur Gandhi ji ki khadi ko. Is a, is, a, is a strong point of India. We have a comparative advantage there, right? We yes. must push it, like we have a comparative advantage in certain other sectors, artisanship and craftsmen, uh, exactly. craftspeople are just our strength, and we, we somehow okay. are ignoring it. Yeah. Right, very, very good points, very good points. Yeah. Thank you, Ashok, thanks. Thank you. And God bless you for the work you're doing. Thank you. बिल्कुल बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अशोक जी और गांधी जी की जो खादी है उसको एक नई राह के साथ हमें आगे लेके जाना है